Library Year in Review mini conference. I'm so glad that you've joined us uh, this morning for some great sessions with librarians in our area talking about their successes of the school year. My name is Shannon Steimel, and I'm a Future Ready Librarian from Live for Life Academy. And um, these sessions will be uploaded to my uh, YouTube channel, PD Bytes, afterwards. And you can also follow PD Bytes on Twitter. I'd like to introduce my special guest host for the morning, JP. So let me let you tell him, tell, uh, excuse me, I'm scrambling my words here. JP, introduce yourself. <laughs> hey, thanks, Shannon. Uh, my name, hi, everyone. My name is JP Presvento. I serve the Fox School District in Arnold, Missouri as the Instructional Technology Coordinator. Um, some of you may be jumping in saying, well, that's weird. Library is a lot more than ed tech. What in the world are you doing here, JP? Um, part of one of the hats I wear is that I facilitate the work of the library media specialist professional learning community. So I, I lead a lot of their PD. Um, I facilitate the meetings. And I serve kind of as a liaison between the libraries and central office administration and and that kind of thing. Uh, you can connect with me on Twitter at jpprez. You can follow my blog at jpprez.com. And since Erin Lawson is in the room right now, I'll plug a podcast that her and I do with a couple other awesome educators called the EdTech Pod Squad that you can subscribe to on, Erin, where can we subscribe? On iTunes and right. Anchor. And probably 87 other places. <laughs> So it is my pleasure to introduce our special guests for the segment. Um, Mindy definitely had a winning year, um, and she's going to tell us a little bit um, both about being the uh, Midwest Education Technology Conference Librarian of the Year, and also um, she was, I think, our only Missouri uh, winner for uh, Fallout Challenge, People's Choice. Um, so that's very exciting, too. So. Um, Mindy, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Mindy Vodkin. Um, I've been the librarian here at Orchard Farm High School for 15 years. Um, I've been with the district for 22 years, so I served as a science teacher seven years prior to that, and I serve on our district technology committee. Um, I, I think the primary reason that Erin nominated me for um, the award was um, we've, we've made a lot of advances in our district with all the libraries because I am the head librarian in our district. And we've made a lot of advances in makerspace and in, uh, incorporating a lot of technology in our libraries. And in addition, um, I'm the project manager for our Future Ready movement. So um, I think those two things are combined or, are why Erin nominated me. So. So, um, Mindy, uh, one of the things that we're really um, looking forward to hearing it about is your work with Future Ready. Um, I know Orchard Farm has um, been one of the leaders in the area as far as adopting um, Future Ready um, within their district. So if you would mind talking about that, that'd be great. Um, we started in February 2017. Um, we went to our school board and um, received their um, permission basically for our superintendent to pledge to be a future ready school. And we jumped in right away and created a future ready committee. Um, and that committee was representative of administrators, students, parents, um, our technology department, um, classroom teachers. We tried to represent um, the entire district on that committee. Um, we completed our assessment. Um, and then we decided to move forward with how we were going to use Future Ready in our district. And, and basically, Future Ready is now um, why for everything that we do. So it, it, it infiltrates every conversation that we're having. And we're starting to develop our PD for next year. And, and the center of that PD is going to be Future Ready. So um, what are we doing in every facet, whether it's the, the school buses that we're selecting or the furniture that we're buying or um, the spaces we're designing and, and our curriculum. Um, we're offering a lot more apprentice programs in the high school. And um, we're also sending kids to um, the community college as juniors now. Um, so a lot of different programs are starting to develop from that future ready philosophy because we've been future ready for this entire school year. So it's kind of changing the way we do everything and the way we look at everything. 
So um, thank you for giving that overview for your district. Um, in the library itself, how do you see um, being a future ready librarian um, changing your practice? Um, I think that the key for the library is that whole personalized learning. Um, when kids come to the library, it's usually, especially at the high school, it's on a voluntary basis. So I get that opportunity to help kids explore their own personal interests and their passions. Um, and that's not only through providing books or resources that support that personal interest, but also um, different activities. Um, we brought in a lot of different stream activities, so lots of science, and technology, engineering, but also a lot of arts and crafts and um, some different projects that allow them to give back to the community as well. So for instance, um, we, made, um, we made quilts for the uh, crisis nursery. Um, and so different things like that where the kids um, can, can pursue some of their own interests. So that's where I think Future Ready has really inspired me as a librarian is what can I do to support kids in finding out more about their own personal interests and passions. Great. Um, before we move on to uh, talking about Follette Challenge, I just wanted to double check. Uh, JP, did you have any questions for Mindy about uh, future ready work? Uh, no, not yet. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to start this next segment just by playing a little bit from uh, the video. Although, you know, I think I may need to pause the sharing and reshare. Uh, so give me just a second here. Make sure we'll be able to hear that video. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try it now. So you guys will have to let me know if you can hear the video when we start playing. <laughs> give me a thumbs up or something. Hi! -yah! Who's going to fix your Chromebook if it gets broken? Not the nerd crew! Don't ever take your school issued device to an outside source. The Orchard Farm Google Ninjas will work hard on your Chromebook and repair it to the best of their ability. Got a broken screen? They can fix it. Keyboard acting funny? No problem. Take your broken Chromebook to the Library Media Center immediately to get it fixed. Don't wait! In August of 2015, our district created the Technology Help Desk course to provide opportunities for our students to receive hands-on experience repairing damaged or malfunctioning Chromebooks from within our district. Because our library became the place where students and teachers came for assistance with their Chromebooks, it made sense to house the program in the library. The overall objective of this program is to provide students with the knowledge and skills to repair Chromebooks and other similar technology, helping them develop the 21st century skills needed for college and career readiness. In this program, students learn to communicate effectively and professionally as they greet student customers and complete the help desk repair ticket. As they complete the repairs, students collaborate with a variety of individuals in order to resolve the Chromebook's issue, including other help desk students, members of our technology department, and the leader of the program. As they collaborate, they often discuss their thoughts with those individuals and ask for guidance and advice as they attempt to complete the repair. In some instances, students communicate with the Chromebook manufacturers to find solutions. Students use critical thinking skills to evaluate the issue and determine a course of action for the repair. If the initial procedure is not successful, students use acquired knowledge along with creativity to determine another possible solution. Experimentation and troubleshooting are crucial skills as they analyze the outcomes of each repair. I've been in the... Okay, so we'll pause uh, there. If you want to watch the whole video, I do have it linked for you guys uh, on our PD Bytes page for today. Um, but, you know, the thing I'll say first is um, beyond just the Follett Challenge and winning that money, which was awesome, um, I love that you took something that could have been a negative of constantly having students coming into the library that need you to help troubleshoot their Chromebooks, and you completely turned it into a positive um, by empowering your students. Um, so I'd love if you tell us a little bit more about uh, specifically your Ninjas uh, project. Um, we started the project um, three years ago, so we have um, utilized this program for three years now. Um, it, it's a fabulous program where kids learn how to troubleshoot and repair Chromebooks. Um, several of these students are actually moving on to this as a potential career for them and something they're going to pursue either through college or technical school. 
Um, also, several of the ninjas in the program, they hire them for summer help with the IT department. So um, what, a, what a great opportunity for those students who think that um, computer repair might be in their future. So, um, and, and the kids um, really get a big kick out of the fact that our own kids repair their Chromebooks. So it's been hey. a great rewarding program for us. Mindy, this is absolutely awesome. Um, I love hearing about schools that have this type of this type of group. Um, so, can you, is this a class? This is a class. They do receive a practical arts credit. Um, they can take it for a semester or for the entire year, and because it counts as an elective, uh, they can take it for more than one year, which is really beneficial for us. Mm -hmm. um, the, that last student that was on the screen right before um, that was about to be interviewed, he's been in the program for all all the years that we've had it. And oh, so wow. he's actually trained other students. Oh, that's so, great. Um, after, after they've been in the program, if they repeat it, they get to actually become like a leader and a trainer for other students, which is another really great opportunity for our kids. So who, are you the class, are you the, I guess the class teacher for this class? I am the teacher. So um, their grade is, is based on three things. Um, they have a weekly evaluation that kind of evaluates their performance, just like they would if they were doing this as a job. Um, they also have to um, complete the forms and the online help desk ticket. So they're evaluated on their ability to use um, the proper terminology and vocabulary and describe the repairs um, correctly. And they, they also have to describe their troubleshooting. Like at first I tried this, that didn't work, I got this outcome, so then I went to this. Um, and that's primarily what their grade is based upon. So it's very similar to um, a full job experience. And we do every two weeks, we sit down and we review their performance. Oh, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell us more about the Follette Challenge and um, why you decided to enter, how you did it, um, what your, if you had any winning strategies for uh, making it into the top. Because I know there were some uh, other Missouri schools that were, you know, originally in the mix that, that did not make it to the, the winner's circle like you did. Um, the Follette Challenge to us was um, crucial um, as far as expanding the technology that we have in the library for the makerspace, so a good portion of the funds that we won from Follett will be used for that in addition to updating our, our nonfiction section. Um, but what really helped us was reaching out to the community. Um, we did a lot of PR and, and a part of that PR was telling our community how the funds were going to be used and we just asked them to vote daily and so every day we pushed out through email and social media, um, asking them to vote and reminding them um, why it was so important for our district and, and how it would help our kids. And we actually advertised pre-K through 12. So we were also asking our elementary school and middle school parents to vote as well, because you know we were saying as your kids move up, they're gonna benefit from the, the things that we purchase with that money. So we had our entire community support, which is, um, you know, the People's Choice Award is based completely on votes. And so we just really um, blasted our community asking for their support. And we do have a really fabulous tight-knit community. And so um, I think that the key though is telling them why we needed it and what we were gonna use the funds for. And then they were behind us 100%. Thank you for those insights. That sounds great. So I'm, I'm excited for you that you get to, to spend that money now. Oh, yes. We're very excited. <laughs> so uh, spending a 3D printer and, and lots of other technology for the districts. So. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, you know, I know uh, Belleville West, I think, won uh, several years ago um, one of the big awards. And I went and visited their school um, afterwards to kind of take in everything they were doing. Um, so if someone wanted to come and see your Google Ninjas program, um, would that be a possibility? Oh, yes, definitely. We've had several school districts come in and, and see the program and how it works. And, and we do service the Chromebooks for the entire district. So yeah, all that's of the great. repairs come to us. Yeah, that's terrific. Um, you know, Hancock Place, I know, is another uh, local school district that's, that has a similar program to this. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're kind of a small, uh, close-knit community like you guys are as well. And they service all the, 
the Chromebooks in the district. So um, thank and you for we sharing. We actually that. visited them. That's that's where we got the idea for the program was from Hancock. Wonderful. So, mm -hmm. Well, Mindy, congratulations on your winning year, and thanks so much for sharing well, thank um, you. that with us. So um, coming up next, we've got uh, JP, our guest host, is going to be uh, sharing some great uh, Google tools for classroom cl collaboration with us. Um, but before we go, I want to give him a chance to, to do a little plug for another upcoming Librarian PD. Awesome. Thank you very much, Shannon. I'm excited to announce that in September of 2018, we I'm going to be co-hosting with some other folks what I think to be the first EdCamp LMS, EdCamp Library Media Specialist, um, a morning of learning for librarians, by librarians, about library stuff. Some of the feedback I get is that PD doesn't always... Um, isn't always geared towards the library staff in my district. So I said, all right, let's change that. Let's have an ed camp. Um, I'm targeting Saturday, September 15th here at Fox High School, um, which is where I'm recording from right now um, for that morning of learning. So kind of stay tuned for more information and I hope to see you all there. Great, thanks JP and thanks again Mindy for joining us. Um, so we're gonna jump out of this session and head to the next one. So if you're coming along with us, uh, make sure to go to that next link and thanks guys. Thank thanks. you.